thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Um, my name is Justina Dacey and I am the Community Engagement Coordinator with St. John's Riverkeeper. And so tonight I'm going to go a little bit over our Get the Dirt Out program that we have here and then I will hand it off uh, to Nick Duin uh, with the City of Jacksonville uh, Erosion and Sediment Control Division. So first off, who is the St. John's Riverkeeper? Uh, well, we are a local 501c3 nonprofit environmental group located here in Jacksonville. Uh, we do cover the whole watershed of the St. John's River. And more recently, we actually just uh, started an office further down in Central Florida to do a little more advocacy down there. We are a member of the Waterkeeper Alliance. So this is a much larger uh, nonprofit group that covers river keepers, water keepers all around the world. We are privately funded, uh, so all of our donations come from donors and memberships, meaning we do not get any government funding, which gives us that very strong independent voice for the river. And lastly, our mission today is to be an independent voice that defends, advocates, and activates others for the protection and restoration of our St. John's River. Uh, so this here is actually Lisa Reinemann, so she is the river keeper, she's sort of the, the public figure and face for the organization. Uh, a few things that we work on as well as many other different things, uh, but mainly we really try to investigate those pollution problems we may see in the river, such as nutrient pollution that causes algal blooms. Uh, we work a lot with Tallahassee officials advocating for policy changes as well as our local officials. We try to seek those sensible solutions to these issues, and of course, go out there and educate the public, just as we are tonight, uh, to really raise the awareness for these issues to get our citizens involved and engaged. So the Get the Dirt Out program, uh, really the issue is that stormwater, it runs off into our waterways and impairs them, which we consider a huge issue because what it's doing is causing a lot of turbidity where it can choke out aquatic life, um, cause fish kills, so there's a lot of issues related to the stormwater runoff. Here in Jacksonville, we've had a huge population growth. I'm sure you've seen all the construction here around town of approximately 30,000 people moving into the area in the last few years, and this is causing, of course, an increase in development. Uh, as I mentioned, this turbidity and sedimentation, they really greatly impact our underwater habitats, such as our grasses, aquatic plants, but as well as I've even learned that these construction sites, uh, if they're having concrete washout, can wash off into these creeks, and essentially what they say is pickle the fish. So it changes the pH level so drastically that it causes a die off. So what is our solution to this big problem here? Uh, so the St. John's Riverkeeper and the City of Jacksonville Erosion and Sediment Control uh, Department are getting together to create this citizen watch program called Get the Dirt Out. Basically what we're doing is training citizens here in Duval County uh, to identify construction sites, but really to identify the violations that, that may occur, they're not always happening, and then of course report them to the proper authority. And so what are some of the benefits to this program? Of course, uh, having these problems remedied much faster, uh, so if there is a violation going on uh, and we have some rain, there could be a lot of sediment getting into the waterway, but if we find it on day one versus day seven, we can reduce a lot of dirt getting into that water there. And then of course, these agencies can react faster because maybe they don't know that this problem's going on. Uh, a great example is Carol here with the St. John's Riverkeeper reported a violation a day ago, uh, yesterday, and Nick was able to go out and uh, check on this site, and he didn't even realize, you know, this, this was a construction site that was happening here, but of course, hopefully we were reducing the amount of sediment getting into the water for that area. And then, of course, uh, the protection of this essential habitat for aquatic plants, fish, and birds is very important to us, but as well as for these animals. All right, so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to, what is, is it Nick? Doing, like, how you doing? Doing, ah, okay. And he is a erosion and control, I'm sorry, erosion and sedimentation control inspector with the city of Jacksonville. So, Nick, I'm going to hand it off to you. Thank you, Justina. 
Hey y'all, I'm Nick Dewan. I'm an erosion and sediment control inspector for the city of Jacksonville. I work for the Environmental Quality Division um, with the city of Jacksonville. Um, erosion and sediment control is just one department. Um, among others, we have air, hazmat. Um, but let's, let's get this moving. So basically, what is EESC? Our, object, uh, our objectives, um, we basically inspect and enforce um, every construction site within Duval County. Um, we're initial, initially, we want to be informed through the construction site prior to any construction going on. Um, sometimes they don't do that. A lot of times they don't do that. Um, just like today, I was informed by a St. John's Riverkeeper today or yesterday, so I went out today to um, check it out. We're going to um, go through a couple BMPs. It's all, they're called Best Management Practices, which are what construction sites are obligated to do to prevent erosion and sediment control from leaving their sites. Uh, so we'll go from there. Um, and then, of course, how to report a violation. Justina will get on the details on that a little bit later, on how to report violations when you're in the field, if you're on a kayak, on a boat, if you're driving by on the way to work. Uh, we'll go from there. So, so our objective, we wanna, we're, we're proactive. I want to put it that way. We want to be out on site before um, any, any, any of these issues do occur. So we are a proactive um, agency but we are reactive with care issues, the citizen action report um, enforcement, I believe it is. Uh, so, but we're preventing any um, sedimentation and turbidity from entering stormwater systems, wetlands, waters of the state, uh, lakes, ponds, St. John's River, Creek, um, MS4s, which is the municipal separate storm sewer systems, which all the water runs into. We saw with Hurricane Irma, all the flooding that happened. Uh, we're trying to prevent that from happening, so. So basically when you want to build something, there's plan review, which uh, typically when they get their plans, they're supposed to call us for an initial inspection. You've got building inspections, fire inspections. Uh, we're on one of those inspections. We come out on site and make sure that everything's in compliance before they begin construction. That's our site inspection. If we do find something, typically uh, on initials we do not, um, but it, with care issues, we'll have to take corrective action. We do a notice to correct, which we'll go into here in a bit. Um, this is actually a notice to correct right here. It's a warning. This is what I sent to uh, the site that I went to today. It's a warning letter. Um, and in the fine print, it basically says uh, you have to uh, adhere to proper erosion and sediment control practices. There's a class that a lot of these contractors take. Um, it's not too expensive, y'all. I'd recommend y'all taking it. It's an erosion and sediment control class. It shows you what to look for. Um, I'm not sure how much it is for civilians, but uh, it's online. And the, and the, uh, the actual, pam the actual um, not pamphlet, but um, what do you want to call it? Manual, the Erosion and sedi Sediment Control Manual is free to uh, download online. You can look at it and it has any and everything that you're supposed to look for and the contractors are obligated to um, adhere to according to their plans. So. Um, and then the last step, of course, is enforcement. If there is a direct violation to waters of the state, um, our separate storm sewer systems. So if you see sediment flowing off a construction site towards a storm drain and you see it going in there, that's a direct violation. That's a water quality violation. That sediment builds up in those storm drains. Riverside flooded. Wells Fargo didn't open, I think, for a couple months downtown from flooding. So it's all, it's all pertinent. What do we got here? So basically all sites come with a, uh, it's called a tin set. It's a uh, tin sets of plans, shows us building plans, all kinds, of, all kinds of plans. And in the fine print, all, a little bit of fine print on the side of the plan is a phone number. It says stormwater erosion and sediment control on that plan. And typically they're supposed to call us for an initial inspection before they start any construction, any land disturbing. Um, so in the tin sets, that's what we're, we're looking for. Large capacity, um, these are just a couple types of construction, new construction projects, industrial, neighborhoods, large capacity storage tanks. Uh, there's a couple of those. Some of the roadways, um, some of the roadway projects are FDOT projects. So if it's, we work in conjunction with FDOT, if it's not us, we will pass on the information to FDOT or Florida Department of Environmental Protection will pass on uh, whatever our findings are if it's, on their, if it's on their grounds. But that's kind of the basic right there. So 
we, we start out by reviewing the plans. We'll go out, I'll physically walk out on site for an initial inspection. We'll open up the plans and see, look at all their measures, see if they're adequate. Um, and they usually are. Uh, initial inspections are pretty easy. The owner and the operator, which is the contractor, will be on site with us. Uh, and initial inspections are pretty easy because nothing's been disturbed yet. Their soil is stabilized. All they do is put up the silt fencing around their perimeter. They have their best management practices, the BMPs in place already. And the plans change throughout the process though. The 10 set plans, they are constantly changing. So when it goes from like land clearing to going vertical, plans change. If there's a creek or a water body, plans change. And sometimes plans change just because their measures aren't even working. So. Um, I had a site like that today I'll get into when we go into the uh, best management practices. So we, like I was saying, we are proactive and reactive. Proactive is our initial inspections, which we start out. Every site, we try to do at least three inspections. We have an initial. We have, I like to get out there when they go from horizontal to vertical. Typically, the contractors will change at that point. And then we do a final inspection. Uh, if they are... If they receive, I believe it's over half an inch of rain, we want to go out after a heavy rain. So if you're, if, like last Sunday we had that big rainstorm, I went out and checked some of our hot spots, of some of our sites to see how they were doing. Um, and, and then sometimes I'll just do a routine. I'll just drive by and be like, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> and so, and then reactive is with care. Um, 28 last year, I believe, was 2000, was that 16 or 17? I think this is 16, 16's number, because 2017, uh, is a, there was a lot more because um, of Irma. But um, we try not to be reactive, but if we have to be, then we are, so. And then, as, uh, as I was saying, here's our, here's some of our stages. Pre-construction would be initial. We get out there, as soon as they call us, we come out and do initial inspection, look at the plans. Clearing and grubbing when they're removing the trees, like you said earlier, they remove the trees, they're clearing, you see the dump trucks coming off. Then they'll do rough grading, which is kind of to smooth everything out, finish grading where it looks nice and pretty. Uh, final stabilization, you got your, um, everything's gone, ver usually it's going vertical between finish grading and final stabilization. And then we close them out, which is happy on both, all, all accounts, all parties are happy after, at, at that point. So, alrighty. So now we're gonna get into the, um, the basics of best management practices. Um, so when you're driving around town, I'm sure you've seen a couple gutters like this. Um, storm drains, that's a, that's a hot spot right there. You got sediment going down the curb right here. Um, these are a couple styles. Um, they're called gutter buddies, uh, it's, it's, it's a brand name. But um, as long as I have something of this nature, um, that's actually gravel going around that one, which the water can flow through, but it helps filter the sediment out. Um, this, one's, this one's sometimes pretty popular. And then a lot of times they'll have filter fabric. We'll go, uh, I think filter fabric's on the next one. But if you see anything of that nature, um, this one's pretty good, but it still has a little bit of maintenance. I, would, I wouldn't write up a warning for this, but I would go talk to the contractor and have them go out there with shovels and a broom and have them put it back on site. But if you see anything like this when you're driving by, you can always uh, put it in the St. John's um, water, rangers. water Rangers. Thank you. St. John's Water Rangers. You can notify them. And then if it's a serious matter, they will get on to us. Otherwise, um, typically that'll, uh, that'll work. This is um, a s straw. straw. This is typically what you'll see out there on the storm drains. But if I mean, sediment gets in there, causes flooding like it did in Riverside. Um, so we want to avoid that. But this is something you can see on every day on the way to work. So if you see it, call it in and we'll head out. This happens all the time. Uh, I actually took this photo. They actually will pull it, when, when we get a lot of heavy rains, they'll pop it up and cause flooding. Neighbors will do this a lot of times. And if you go into a new neighborhood, They'll pop it up because their streets are flooding. Um, guy had a Corvette and he didn't like his Corvette, hit his bumper hit in the water, so he popped him up like this. Um, we tip, as long as you don't see sediment flowing towards it, um, if you do see sediment flowing towards it, give us a call, but as long as, it, this is okay. Um, but it says improper, but it's, tempor it's temporary. As long as they put it back down, as soon as the rain stops, 
If the reins are stopped, you want it back down like that first picture. So, but you definitely don't want it up like that um, on a day-to-day -day basis. That, I don't know if you can see all the sediment, like a beach kind of flowing into that. And that's just improperly maintained. They do have the gutter buddy in place, but all the water had pushed that in and it's just not properly maintained. So you want to have, in addition, they can have BMPs in place, but they got to maintain it. They can't just put it and leave it. So we're out there, I mean, I do all of Duval County, so I have to hop around to every site and make sure that everybody's maintaining their sites in addition to adhering to their plans. Um, those sandbags that they had on the initial, wasn't, this one's not anchored, so that's why it kind of got pushed in there. Um, and there actually is, I believe, a grate underneath that down in here that's just complete. It's just, they, I mean, that was, um, that's off a of Max Legit Parkway, actually. Um, so everywhere you go, if you see anything like that, call it in, and uh, we'll take care of it. And you can always dial 630 City also um, if, it's really, if it's something like that bad. This is good. So this one, they went above and beyond. They, went, they put silt fencing around it, and it's permeable, permeable, so the water can go through it. Sediment stays on the outside. And I believe they have filter fabric underneath it, which there's be a, a, fo a photo of it later. And basically, it's a permeable fabric. They lift up the grate, put the fabric underneath the grate, and put it back down so the water flows through, sediment stays out. Um, you'll see a lot of those, not so much the silt fencing, but you'll see a lot of these like on Riverside, uh, down in Bartram area. Um, you'll see the filter fabric on them. And as long as, I don't know, if, I don't remember if we have a picture of the filter fabric. I believe we do. If you're driving by and you see one of those grates and you can see the fabric on all four sides, that's a good sign. That means it's covered on all four sides. If you only see three sides, that means it hasn't been maintained and it's, it's pushed, probably fallen through into that, uh, into that storm drain. So um, there we go. There's some filter fabric. Uh, one, two, three. See how they're missing that side right there? So that means all this sediment is flowing right there. And this had kind of caved in right here. Um, town center. All that construction over there, I'm, uh, that happens all the time over there. Um, just, it's just an everyday thing. They have, they're supposed to do weekly inspections. It's uh, the SWIP. It's the Safe Water Pollution Prevention Plan. For every construction site, they do a weekly inspection. Well, they're supposed to. Uh, and I go on site, and they're supposed to walk around and make sure that these are all in place. Um, this car wash right next door to um, where we're at right now, when they're, they're still under active construction, they have a lot of storm grates out there. All those storm grates drain into this pond where this, this store paddle boards and kayaks back here, and we don't want all that um, to kill off the plant life and the fish in this, in this uh, pond back here. So that was an issue I had with them. I wrote them a warning letter and they complied right away. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that's an everyday thing you can see just driving down the road. Just look for all four sides coming out looking like that. And if you're just walking by one, um, typically uh, if you're walking by like a construction site, never go on a construction site. It's a felony. So <laughs> don't go on it. It's a felony. They will, get, they will get you. But if you happen to be walking by the sidewalk and you just see it and you see all four sides are like this, but you see a bunch of sediment just built up like where it's just plush with the grate, not maintained once again so we want to have that I, I would I would come out and do another inspection um, with them uh, this is another type of um, gutter protection just uh, just another permeable I think this one's straw inside there um, that one works pretty that, those ones work pretty good this as you can see actually they're dewatering which um, taking water off site and discharging it. And as long as it's clean water, it's good, but it, they, uh, it was not clean water going off site and it completely destroyed this silt fence going into a city storm drain. So this is actually turbid water flowing off site into this storm drain. And as you can see, it's not maintained at all. And uh, that was uh, an enforcement. That went straight to enforcement because that went into a city uh, storm sewer system. So, all right. So that was just storm drains. <laughs> and mostly storm drains, you got the curb inlets and you got the grates. Those are the two that you'll see every day driving around is the curb, in, the, the grates that you see you can walk on or the curb inlets. Um, so also when you're driving around, say you're driving by and you see, the, you see all the construction exits like the one you saw today, 
they did not have any of their construction exits stabilized. And that results in track out. You see the tire marks driving dirt out onto the road. And there are minimum requirements. This is the specifics in that e erosion and sediment control manual. This is one of the things that they show in that manual. Um, and you can find all of these BMPs, the best management practices in that manual, the erosion and sediment control manual online. Uh, this is an everyday thing that um, you'll see driving by. So if you see a lot of the stone packed down into the dirt or, and the sediment, um, it's not being maintained. They'll have to scrape all that back up. And there's uh, ways they can prevent that. Uh, I think, I don't know if they show it. Yep, filter fabric. So typically you'll want to put the permeable filter fabric underneath this. Then they throw the stone on. Um, again, don't go on the construction sites. Um, but if you have walking by on the sidewalk or driving by, just keep an eye on the stone and to see what it looks like. If it's packed down, it needs some attention. I want to all come out and take a look at it. Uh, you can always 630 City or River Keepers. Did you cite them on that as well? Yes. Okay, that's a good one. Um, ideally, though, this one is good. Uh, I mean, as a, as a city inspector, we can't recommend anything to these contractors um, for the site work. We can't recommend what they do. We can't tell them what to do, um, but we can tell them, uh, we can't tell them anything. But I, in my opinion, I would like to maybe see some silt fencing along this to keep all that contained within the limits of construction. That looks like wetlands over here. Um, the, whole, the whole city of Duval County is wetlands. So, uh, but this is a good site. This is a good construction exit. It grabs all the, the sediment off the tires and removes it before we uh, get onto the road. And there's different types of this. Tip, you'll see the gravel mostly. Sometimes you'll see like the cattle grate um, or rumble pads and it just bum, 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 and shakes all that sediment off the tires before uh, we get on, onto a city right away uh, roadway. Yep, yeah, yeah, see, all packed in. Silt fencing's falling down. Uh, you can see a little bit of track out right here. So that one, sometimes it'll just come out with um, an excavator or whatnot and just pick it up and shake it up a little bit. But that filter fabric they put down underneath that helps out from it padding down with all the traffic coming in and out. So, but if you see this, just drive it on the road and you see that and you see some track out, call it in and we'll, it will take care of it. That's another thing you'll see on an everyday basis. That's a good one. That's a bad one. Uh, <laughs> this one doesn't have any stone. Uh, yeah, so that one's they have nothing there. And that was basically like one of my sites today that I went to this morning. That was, I had, I had uh, got them on that. And they stated, sometimes when I'm on site, they will come out and be like, we have the stone coming in this afternoon. And I'm like, okay, send me and take a photo for me and uh, send it to me and let me know. So sometimes they're compliant right away. Sometimes it takes weeks. It all depends. Uh, silt fencing. So this has a funny story behind it. Um, so Tom, uh, Ralph Warren up in Colorado bought a whole mountain and put his fence around his whole mountain, but he put all the fencing on the outside. So the mountains over here, put the whole fencing on the outside. The stakes are on the inside over here and he has cattle. It's a huge cattle ranch. So when the cattle walks up and knocks, the, bumps into the fence, boom, the fence falls down, cattle get out. His whole mountain is built like this. And so it's not effective, all the sediment all the, just like cattle, sediment, everything falls out, it all comes out. So he has a whole mountain in Colorado that's completely useless, a useless ranch. Um, so you want the sediment on the inside so the stakes are uh, reinforcing the pressure of the sediment. And there's different types you'll see. Um, DOT likes to use like a, uh, an accordion style, looks like, an, uh, like a zigzag accordion style silt fencing. Um, but as long as you, we'll go through a couple other photos here in a bit, but um, I mean, you don't really need to know too much about the details of it, but as long as you see it, what you want to look for is um, no gaps on the bottom. You want to have a nice, it's supposed to be trenched in, so you want to have a nice, plush, taut silt fence around the perimeter. No sagging, no missing stakes. You typically want them uh, about six foot apart. It, it all depends, but you, I mean, it's like a regular fence. You kind of want to just have it look nice and neat. So, uh, this one's nice and taut. This one's intense, actually. All, that, all this pressure on this water. I mean, 
This, this one definitely will need some maintenance in the future, but it's doing its job. See how it's holding all that sediment and pressure right there? It's nice and taut. Um, that's, a, that's a great example right here. Um, but it has, it's, 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 it's pushing its limits there. So they would have to do something out there to get it um, ready for. If, it did, if that did break and fall out, uh, that's on them. So that's why we're proactive. I don't want to come out there and tell them that before anything does happen so they can get out there. And we don't have to be reactive and follow them. There's that gap. You don't want to see any of that. We call those wind fences. It's just blowing back and forth. It's a sail. This is all sediment flowing out into, it looks like a city conveyance here, which are the ditches that you see along the roadways. And those flow into uh, city storm drains. So if you ever see any sort of a gap like this, or you see the, fen the fence kind of windy and it's flapping and the posts are waving, you can, you can call that in. And uh, we'll go take a look. This one's a good one. That's, and a lot of times you'll see double silt fencing. They'll do one layer and two layer. And then if they want to go above and beyond sometimes, you can even see like veg they'll plant vegetation in here between the two silt fencing. So if anything does get out, it settles in that area. Some people like to go above and beyond. That's a, that's a case where it's flying flowing out of the, uh, under the silt fence, out onto the city right away, and down the curb. You'll see that all the time. Um, that's a big no-no. You see that on a daily basis. Uh, <sighs> good one. He didn't go all the way around. I don't know what he was doing. Uh, but um, <laughs> it looks good. This is actually one of the newer, nicer silt type, or, type of uh, silt fencing. I don't know what's going on with that one. That one's pretty bad. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, this, this is, uh, and silt fencing does not stop the flow of water. It is not made to, uh, to be used as a turbidity curtain, which we'll get in here in a little bit. Turbidity curtains stop the flow of turbidity, which is suspended particles. We'll get into that here in a few minutes. But silt fencing is typically used for the perimeter of the site to keep sediment controlled on site. So hay barrels, you see these sometimes, and this slows the velocity of water flowing down, helps out with sediment and turbidity flowing off site as it's going down the creek. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of construction companies are moving to um, synthetic. Some use hay, some use synthetic. Uh, straw, some use straw. Um, but really this is acting as a filter. You see one, two, those ones look like they're dead. Those are some old ones, I guess. Three, uh, they can use rock. Some, some use rock berms. Rocks work out really well, like the small pebbles. So um, those are OK. Oh, and it looks like some sort of wetlands here, too, also. But this isn't too bad. There we go, the turbidity curtains. So you'll see these on water bodies, the St. John's River, Blackwater Creek. They're the yellow curtains you see out there floating on the, uh, the water. And this is the curtain up here. They usually have an anchor down here. And uh, basically at the construction sites over here, it's, it's keeping the sediment in, retained in this area to where you can either settle out or they can take it out. Hopefully they can take it out and they're supposed to have uh, perimeter controls on the site here itself. This is a secondary containment measure to keep it in case it does get into the waterway. Uh, we can go from there. So that's exactly what it's doing. It's doing its job. This is all turbid water out this way. I guess the construction site's over here. It's all flowing this way. And you can see the color difference. And you can, you can see the color difference when you're out there. Um, if you're standing on a bridge, um, I think over by, I mean, anywhere on the St. John's, any of the creeks, you can see the color difference. If you see it, we'll go through a couple bad ones here, but this is, a, this is a good one. This is containing it. It's a lot of pressure on it though. And sometimes if it's a high velocity of water or a high, high tidal flow with the creeks, these typically will not work as effectively. They want to have some other countermeasures in place, but if you're on your kayak, Take a, you can see that you can, you can kayak up this way and you see that and you see it leaking, call it in. Uh, if anybody of y'all have a boat or a kayak and you see this on the water, um, just let us know. This one's, oh. 
this one was good, but I don't know what they, they, they didn't, they're not maintaining it. It's, um, so it could leak out into the water body here. Um, and basically, turbidity is suspended particles, so they can retract all this and suck it out with a, a, a back truck or whatnot and get it out of the water and bring it back onto site um, and if needs be. But this, this is almost good. Um, but something, so you're either kayak and you see that, take a photo, and Justina will get on to uh, tell you about the, um, how to work the. Um... Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Water Rangers. This is one on the St. John's, actually, right here. Uh, they, um, they had to do some maintenance with it. They had to tie it back over here a little bit, but they, they were maintaining it. The curtains were consistent. If you see gaps in it, over here on Town Center a lot sometimes, their new construction site, they have some gaps in it. Like it'll, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know how it happens, but sometimes a piece will just sink. And, um, or this one here, the current, is too strong. It's just pushing all the sediment over it. It's not even effective. So they have to do, they would have to come up with something. They would have to go back to stage one with the, those plans that we were talking about. They'd have to go back to their engineers and be like, hey guys, we're having issues here. We need to develop something different because these turbidity curtains are not working. But these are things you see on the water all the time. You'll see, this is um, San, San Jose area, um, new apartment complex going up. Uh, I don't remember where that one is. That's an older one. But kayak boat, just keep an eye on these. They want them consistent, strong line, contained, contained is what you're looking for on the water. It's pretty simple and easy. So uh, these are actually piles of sediment. So if they're not going to be used for a while, they want to have them covered. You'll see spray trucks out there hosing them down, keeping them wet uh, from blowing away because a lot of the dust will blow off and then land on the roadway. It's leaving the site, another issue that we have. Um, so this cover them, cover them up, this is great. They threw sandbags on there. I think this was before Irma. So that was, that was, that was awesome. They did a good job. Don't. <laughs> I mean, they just left it out there. And it's a, a lot of this, and I'm in the water quality department, so I'm looking for water quality uh, citations. So a lot of this could blow off site into the roadway and get into the storm drains. We have air quality in our department also, which would be, they would get on this right away. Uh, so you have air quality and water quality at the same time if you do not cover. So if you see a pile, if they're working on it or if you see equipment out there and they're out there working, it's okay. As long as they're actively using it. But if it's been out there, you drive by a couple weeks and it's just been sitting there, you can call it in and let us know. And uh, we'll go check it out. Another do and don't. Uh, Looks so like they got a creek right here too with no silt fencing along it. So, I mean, this one has multiple violations or multiple po potential violations, should I say. Um, but, so this one, this water actually looks a little bit turbid in color. This is a turbidity curtain here. It also helps keep a lot of the nonsense out, trash and debris floating down. Uh, they do uh, work a lot of the times, but um, turbid, turbid water is suspended, clay gets suspended. Once clay gets in the water, it stays suspended and it, it, it will not settle out for a long time. So sometimes they do work, sometimes they don't. Again, they have to go back to the plans. This is actually kind of right over here by Town Center. They don't have anything here. Well, this is sedimentation. So the difference, sedimentation is physical dirt going off site, which you can see right here flowing into the water, where turbidity, uh, can get underneath these turbidity curtains, which is what they're made for, but they don't always work. And this is all turbid water going in there. So turbidity is kind of like that chocolate milk color, where sediment is that heavier uh, mud just going into the water on the roads. So that's the difference of sedimentation and turbidity. So, <clears throat> uh, you probably won't see these unless they're like right next to the construction site. So when they start dewatering, which means, I mean, all of Duval County is a wetland. So they have to, if they're digging like a parking garage, they have to go down and they hit the water table. And after Irma right now, the water table is really high still. So they only have to go down a few feet before they hit that water table. They're pumping all that water out. It's going down this tube and this is a sediment bag. So all the sediment is going into that bag and it's actually, it looks wet. That's because the water is filling up and 
uh, it's like a like a mesh waterbed kind of you can kind of think of it and the water's flowing out of it. it's clean water coming out and all the dirty sediment and dirt is staying in that bag which is great um, and a lot of sites I wish would use that more often what do we got in here geotextile bags that they're known as but if you see one on site that's what they're doing um, as long as it's clean water coming out and if you see it it may be off-site too sometimes and if you see one as long as it's kind of clean water coming off-site it's clean it looks clear um, then you're good to go but if it looks like that chocolate milk no bueno <laughs> then you got a turbidity curtain out there too so if any of it does happen or if sometimes a bird lands on it and punctures a hole it's where it's out they got the turbidity curtains they got secondary containment out there uh, so they're, they're doing their job there there's the filter fabric, kind of what it looks like before it goes into the grate. And then it has water, and then that's a little tube, and then the water goes down this, it captures all the sediment. Uh, there's that double layer of silt fencing I was telling you about, going all the way down. That's really good. Uh, then the grates, and safety first. There's the, you'll see these guys out here all the time doing, um, putting those in. I mean, you can walk. You'll see those all the time. And if you see a site, too, that's been completed, like a lot of town centers getting completed now, and if you see those filter fabrics down in there and, and there's no construction at all, a lot of times these contractors will leave them. Um, you can call those in too, because we want to have those guys pick that up because that causes a lot of flooding, but it's unneeded. Those are, those are drainage systems. And if there's no construction, make sure there's no construction, of course, because it's felony, once again, to go on site. Uh, but if you see one over here at Town Center, like they just finished up the Best Buy section over there and all that, uh, take a look, you see one? call it in and so I can call the contractors and they'll come out and take it out uh, that'll help prevent flooding that's just improper maintenance it's not not trenched in see how it's just flowing out this way uh, and what I mean by trenched in is they're supposed legally by according to the manual they go six inches down six inches across kind of an L so it's nice and tucked and taut and tied in there um, you don't have to worry about that it's un that's that's me but just as you're driving down the road, you see it kind of just the wind, like I was saying, the wind fence is blowing, flapping back and forth. Uh, let us know. And that's good. A uh, couple permits I, I mentioned earlier. We deal with the uh, Florida Department of Environmental Protection uh, Environmental Resource Permit. These are the permits that, some of these permits that they'll have to. Um, some, they don't always have to get these permits. It depends on the size of the site. It's a big site, small site. Uh, depends on what they need. If they're going to be dewatering, they go with FDEP, Florida Department of Environmental Protection. If they're impacting the wetlands or anything of that sort. Um, but typically you'll see those big billboards and you'll see like the, the signs and their permits out there. But you don't have to worry about the permits. It's not something, uh, but just for just for your knowledge, if you'd like to know. I mean, that's what, that's what we are looking for. We look for these in the initial inspections too. When we go out there, we, we uh, see what permits they have already, um, where they're allowed to discharge. A lot of these guys are dewatering out here because of the high water table right now. So we wanna know where they're gonna be discharging into one of those sediment bags, into the wetlands, into a storm drain. Um, and um, I think we have some dewatering photos on here. Do we have any more? That's it? That can't be all. That was it. All right, well, I'm going to put Justina back on. Thank you so much. Awesome. And if you all have any questions, I'll be here afterwards. Thank you, Nick. All right, so as Nick mentioned, uh, if you see these violations, there's sort of two methods you can go through to um, report them. And one of them is an app that we have. You can easily download it, but you can also use it on your computer. It's sometimes a little bit better if you do it on the computer. Uh, they're still working out some glitches with the app. But it's called Water Rangers, and so here is the, the website for you guys. And I'm just gonna quickly go through um, sort of my seven steps to join Water Rangers and how to properly report on it. Uh, so first off, you wanna go onto the website and join Water Rangers, and your next step is going to be you're going to create a profile. Uh, so you guys can sort of see here, this is my profile. You actually get awarded little badges and points the more uh, reports that you do and the more you utilize the app. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to try to find the St. John's Riverkeeper team. So we are a group uh, on.
on the website. If you can go to the next slide for me. Again. <laughs> All right, and then of course you're going to scout for issues. So you can report algal blooms on here. You can report construction site violations. So you guys just learn that. Even trash or litter that you may see in a waterway. Uh, so this is what it's going to look like. It's a map-based app, and you will sort of create your location, report your issue. They have it nicely divided up into different issues. Uh, for the construction sites, I typically use shoreline alterations, because that's what we're kind of considering them. Uh, but you can report pollution. Even Algal Blooms has its own specific button for it. And then, of course, you're going to create your location here. Uh, and then this is how you the issue report is going to look. If you can see here, uh, it has sort of the person's name, what is the issue. And then what will happen is it will send an email to someone in St. John's Riverkeeper and let us know about it. And then we can sort of guide you into the next steps on how to investigate it further. But what's really great about it is that anyone can go on this app or even on the website and see who are your neighbors reporting, what are some issues in your local waterways, in your neighborhood specifically, mm -hmm. and you can even get involved with it if you want to. Uh, so this is really great for transparency as well as getting sort of the community together uh, to work to resolve these problems faster. So it's a good tracking yeah, mechanism. Yeah, it is great well. for tracking. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to give some examples that have already been reported. And you can go on tonight later and, and check it out too. Uh, but this one was, I believe, Fishweir Creek had a shoreline alteration, so it was a construction site violation. Uh, this was where you can add the photos. That's another thing, take a lot of photos, and I'm sure Nick will appreciate it too. When you go to a site and you're like, hey, I saw a bunch of dirt, well, how much dirt, you know, a photo will help answer that question much better. And then, of course, where the location is. So you can upload your photos. You can put lots of comments. Uh, be detailed as possible, you know, who you spoke with, what number you called, maybe your care issue report. I've been using that a little more often since I call 630 City more. Um, so continue. All right, and then this is sort of a just continuation of the dialogue that happened with Fisher, Fishweir Creek. Uh, so who was investigating, who resolved it, or was it closed or resolved? Uh, and then just to review, this is sort of my seven steps of, of Water Rangers reporting. Um, join Water Rangers, create your profile. Of course, you need to join the St. John's Riverkeeper team so that the report will go to us, uh, so we'll see it. Scout for those issues, report the issue, create the location, create an issue report. And then lastly, follow up. So we've really been trying to be um, very diligent about keeping up with these issues and making sure they are resolved, that they're not just sitting there pending, because um, that's sort of how you get things get things done, right? Um, next slide. And so this here is really the two different ways you can report. As uh, Nick mentioned, if dirt is leaving the site, that is essentially a violation. Potentially. Or potentially a violation. Uh, so I would recommend call 630 City right away, because if it's summertime and it might rain, that dirt's just going to keep leaving the site, or it's going to eventually clog up a creek or um, storm drain. Uh, but if you're not as, as sure about it, you can use Water Rangers to do all the reporting and then I'll sort of help you uh, figure out if it really is, if we should do the next step of calling 630 City. You can call the city, you can actually go on the website um, and report it through their care issue system. I will say calling is a lot easier. Uh, sometimes it's a little more difficult with getting the correct address to make it work. And then tonight I do have a reference field guide, I know some of you guys have them, to help you review basically everything that we just went over. What is a violation, what is not a violation, what should I report, um, what not to report. And so uh, this here, actually, okay. you can go. this is the field guide uh, that we have printed tonight, they are in color, and it goes over the main ones we talked about, silt fences, uh, turbidity, um, exits and entrance sites to constructions. I just recently reported one out on 301 uh, for that. It was very easy to figure out. There was track out all over the road, uh, a lot of track out. And so, you know, called Nick and he went out there and checked it out. Um, and I do have a site report form. If you guys are interested, it sort of asks you questions uh, when you get to the site, what to look for. 
Uh, but we haven't really been using this as much because one, you can't walk onto a site, so we don't really want you to be inspecting the site that well. Um, and two, the guide really is much it's better. Felony. It's a felony. It's, it's, a, it's a felony. felony don't walk on the site. The and then also, uh, the guide just does a better job of visually allowing you to figure out what is and isn't you should report. Um, but if you're interested in using those site report forms, just let me know and I can send some your way. And lastly, if you guys have any further questions, feel free to ask uh, Nick or I. And of course, this is my email here, so if you have any other further questions about all of this. And we thank you guys for taking the time to come out uh, on this late evening and learn more about these sort of dirt issues <laughs> related to the St. John's River. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs>